Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. The defrost heating element is a critical part of the defrost system. If the element is faulty, then ice will build up and the refrigerator will not cool properly. In this episode, first we'll learn how it all works. Then we'll access and test the heating element. Finally, We'll see how to install a new one. This applies to most top freezer, bottom freezer, and side-by-side -side refrigerators. All refrigerators work in the same basic way. When cooling is needed, the cold control sends power to the cooling circuit. The compressor pushes the refrigerant through the system. In the freezer, heat is extracted by the evaporator coils and is released through the condenser coils behind the refrigerator. This process continues until the set temperature is reached. Each time the door is opened, humid air enters the fridge. This moisture condenses and freezes around the evaporator coils. If left unchecked, a buildup of ice will prevent the refrigerator from cooling properly. Modern refrigerators have a defrost system. This includes a defrost timer or controller, a heating element, and a thermostat or thermistor. When the cycle begins, the defrost control shuts off power to the compressor and the fans. This prevents the refrigerator from cooling while the heater is active. Next, power is sent to the heating element, which melts the ice on the coils. The water flows into the drain pan under the fridge and evaporates over time. The heating element continues to heat until the defrost thermostat warms up and disconnects power. Once the time is up, power switches back to the cooling circuit. If the heating element fails, then the defrost cycle won't run and ice will begin to build up. Using a multimeter, components can be tested for continuity. A continuity test will determine if there's a continuous path for electricity to flow through. Without continuity, the component will not work and will need to be replaced. To begin, you might need a screwdriver or nut driver and a multimeter. You might also need a towel and a heat gun. Keep in mind there is some variation between models and not all refrigerators will have the same parts. You can enter your model number on the Amory Supply website to see a parts breakdown. This can be helpful to show you which parts are in your refrigerator and where they are located. First, slide the refrigerator out from the wall. When there is enough room, unplug the cord to disconnect the power. In this case, you can work on the refrigerator in place with it still against the wall. Since the evaporator fins are sharp, it's best to wear cut-resistant gloves. To access the evaporator coils, you'll have to remove the screws to the freezer cover panel. Lift up the mounting tabs and remove the panel. If the fan is mounted to the panel, you might need to disconnect the wire harness. In a side-by-side -side fridge, the steps are the same. If your model has a bottom freezer, then you'll have to remove the door to access the freezer components. You can see how to do this in the video linked below.
If there is a large buildup of ice, then you'll have to defrost the freezer to gain access to the evaporator coils. First, place a towel at the bottom of the refrigerator to catch any water. To melt the ice, you can leave the freezer door open, but that will likely take many hours. To speed this up, you can soak a cloth in warm water and wipe down the frost. Additionally, you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun on a low heat setting. As the ice starts to melt, you can chip it into smaller pieces. Once it's clear, remove the screws to the freezer cover panel. Lift up the mounting tabs and remove the panel. If the fan is mounted to the panel, you might need to disconnect the wire harness. Now remove the ice around the evaporator coils. Be careful and avoid chipping away ice on the coils, as they are easily damaged. If you end up puncturing the coils, the refrigerant will leak out. This can only be repaired by a certified technician, and is very expensive to fix. Once the ice is removed, dry off the freezer. If necessary, let it air dry. Remove the wire connector. Set the multimeter to the ohms or resistance setting. Now touch the probes to each of the corresponding terminals. If the element is good, it should have a resistance between 20 and 100 ohms. Some defrost heaters have a built in thermostat. If the freezer is still cold, then the thermostat should be closed and there will be continuity. If it's warmer than 5 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermostat will open and there will be no continuity. If needed, place the thermostat in a glass of ice water with salt. Adding a lot of salt to the water will lower the freezing temperature. After a few minutes, Testing at minus 6 degrees Celsius or 20 degrees Fahrenheit should give you continuity. If there's no continuity or if the resistance is significantly off, then the defrost heater is faulty and should be replaced. First, release any mounting clips. If needed, unclip the thermostat. Now remove the heating element. In some cases, you might need to reposition the evaporator or bend some metal in order to remove the element. Align the new heating element. Next, use the mounting clips to secure it into place. If needed, clamp the thermostat onto the evaporator coil. Now reconnect the wires. Align the freezer cover panel. If needed, reconnect the wire harness. Now tighten the mounting screws. Plug in the cord to reconnect the power. Now slide it back into place. Make sure to leave a couple of inches of space between the refrigerator and the wall. This will allow for proper airflow. 
Now test the refrigerator to see if it's working properly. Now if the defrost system still isn't working, then it could be an issue with another component. You can see how to troubleshoot this in the video linked below. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an AIMRI location to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.